It's your daily dose of Donna. Welcome to the show. Happy Tuesday, Tuesday, March 12th. And I am officially stepping into the role of Parvati from the traders with my headband. I've got the leopard print headband from Kitsch. I've got my, um, you know, jungle background. I am the queen of the wild things, the jungle. Welcome. Welcome. If you guys notice here on YouTube, I definitely added a little bit of an intro to the intro. And that's because I get so many messages from people saying, I just get notified about your live and then I jump in. I'm already, you know, a few minutes in. Hopefully I'm getting you guys a little bit of, uh, you know, a warning, a warning that we're about to get in here. Make sure to subscribe. Those of you that are here, so many of you watch this video every single day. I look at the analytics and you are not subscribed. Remember our goal, our goal is to get to 15,000 subscribers. We need about 500 subscribers by the end of the month. So I am absolutely going to uh, do my my best journalist Journalist uh, reporting on the disappearance of Kate Middleton. Dun, dun, dun. We have so much to talk about today. We're going to talk about all the conspiracy theories around Kate. And yes, I will admit that I am a, a proud member of Kate Gate. Okay. I've officially joined the cult. We're going to talk about the Vanderpump uh, Rules midseason trailer. And of course, we're going to talk about the fact that Real House as a Beverly Hills is back in production who will be part of the cast, all on today's Daily Dose of Donna. Yay, we are here. We are... You know what I was going to say, but I'm not, so I don't want to say it, but we're here and I, we're cheering. <laughs> Have no fear. Um, uh, make sure you don't hit a deer. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. So many things are happening right now, you guys. We are officially in a great week because we're wrapping up Real House as a Beverly Hills reunion tomorrow. So we're going to find out absolutely nothing about Morgan Wade. I say that with 100% confidence that we will not find out about Kyla Morgan Wade in tomorrow's reunion. Pretty much positive about that. And then we have the Love is Blind reunion tomorrow night. Remember, I can't watch it live because I'm going to be watching my kids sing a song at their school. Now, a lot of my um, kids, school friends, moms listen to this show. In fact, not going to name any names, but one of their teachers is a huge doser. So I don't want to talk badly about the fact that I have to spend my love is blind, you know, reunion night at their school. But I will say that um, I'm not happy about it. And had they come to me, had the, you know, school board come to me when they were putting together their calendar and said, Donna, you know, we're looking to schedule all the important events of the year. Is there any like conflicts? I would have said, well, let's, let's look at the Netflix schedule. Okay. Now it's going to be okay. I will watch it with you. A lot of interesting things have arrived. Okay. We have noticed that something is in the air in the love is blind community. All of the couples are now somewhat back together. We saw a TikTok yesterday that I posted on my stories of Brittany and Kenneth. Kenneth is the principal that was addicted and dating his phone upon arrival back to Charlotte after the pods, after their Mexican vacation. You guys remember this? Kenneth, who looked like he literally went from being so happy, so sweet, so kind, and so all over Britney to being not interested in her whatsoever when they got back to Charlotte, apparently, according to a couple of other people that were on the show, the reason why that scene when they broke up, remember they were standing over the kitchen and Kenneth was like this. And if you're watching, it's me strangely like making out with my phone. By the way, by the way, note to self, if you have cameras on you, put your freaking phone down, okay? It's not a good look. No one's that busy. You're checking TikTok and you know it, Kenneth. You're on Reddit. I feel it. 
Which snark page are you part of, Kenneth? So Kenneth and Brittany had a TikTok together. Now they weren't making out or anything, but they were like playing with the audience. Brit Brittany was like, like, made a little sound and did a little like finger over her mouth. Shh. And then Kenneth comes out of the room. Do you guys think that Brittany and Kenneth got back together? I would be shocked. Now, I can't say 100%, but lots of people have um, jumped into my DMs that have felt like possibly he is not into Brittany for a variety of reasons. I'm not going to say it. You guys can just kind of take your thoughts and, and go with them, you know, but that is was a lot of people's reactions. A lot of people also thought that he changed when he had a conversation with AD. Remember when they were still on vacation, he had a conversation with AD about the fact that he's a black man marrying a white woman. And what does that mean? She has to raise black kids and this and that. And even though she was so down for it and she was so ready to do it and so almost excited about that, he seem to have changed directly after that conversation. So we're going to find out about them. Now we know Jimmy and Chelsea are hanging out together. They were hanging out in Florida at a wedding. They were at some sort of concert or something. People in TMZ land, you know, reported that they were all up in each other's biz. And then of course we have AD and Clay who were photographed or videoed at some sort of party doing some sort of like dancing around a table. So love is blind. Um, it looks like it worked out. We'll have to see who's really a couple and who's not. I did notice a little bit of behind the scenes drama yesterday. So Jessica, Jessica is our resident. You're, you're going to need an EpiPen because you're going to choke and die when you see me. I wish I had the confidence of Jessica Vestal, right? She, I mean, like what in the world? She um, was commenting. So there's another podcast out there called it would be good if I knew it. It's about like, it's called In the Pods or something. It's a very, very popular podcast. It usually becomes very popular around Love is Blind air dates. I don't know if it's popular um, outside of, you know, Love is Blind time. Yeah, it's number one on the top charts for TV and film today. Number one. Okay, that's a big deal. Usually it's Watch What Crappens or Two Teas in a Pod is usually up there. Um Give Them Lala is usually up there. Anyway, Out of the Pods it's, is what it's called. And it's with Deep D, Vampati, and Natalie Lee. Both of them were on the same season of Love is Blonde. I remember Deep D was with Shake and Natalie was with that other weird dude who was also on like Perfect Match. Like really cracked out. Blonde dude. Remember him? Mark says there are other podcasts. Rude. I'm like, yeah. What? Did you ask me? Did you ask me for permission? Out of the pods. This is daily dose of out of the pods. Anyway, the point is, yesterday they posted something on their Instagram and Jessica was not having it. She said, ugh, who's giving these two a platform? They keep lying about everything. Look, I can't listen to this because I didn't actually find, and I know, please do not at me on this one, but you know how it's a personal preference. There's a lot of people out there that can't stand certain people that we really love or vice versa. This is how the world turns. It's okay. Deep D and Natalie were not people I care to listen to. I don't care if they have insider information. There's way too many people that I'd rather listen to, you know, talk about things. So I don't listen to the show, but Jessica clearly has an issue with them. So I thought that was interesting. I'm like, what are we missing there about love is blind? Um, I think, you know, I'm very interested in seeing this season. I wish they had love is blind season seven already ready to go in the, in the can. I want to watch that tomorrow. Like if we, we need to be, we need to have a 24 seven love is blind network. Forget Netflix. I want the lib network. Lib. It, it, like. Lib TV, Love is Blind TV. I want to be able to watch. Oh, you know how on Big Brother, how you can watch the um, live feeds? I want to watch live feeds of the pods. Can you imagine how boring? Can you imagine how boring it would be to have to watch live feeds of the pods? <laughs> because we just see the, like, the edited moments when it's actually good. Can you imagine when they're just sitting there and then they're like, so uh, how many... How many pounds do you normally like curl when you're in the gym? How, um, mm. what's your, like, what do you get from Starbucks? 
Yeah. Wait, what? You don't eat lox on your bagel? That's so weird. Um, so how much protein do you normally take in on? Oh, okay, cool. Um, or do you use Sensodyne or do, are your teeth not sensitive? Oh, okay. Oh my God. Last week on Real Housewives, like that's what I would talk about. If I was dating in the pods, you best be. Honestly, you should be a gay man because I just want to go in there and I just want to talk housewives and Bravo. And if you can't like hang on the Bravo and housewives talk, it's just not going to be a match for me. So at this point, we just have to, you know, um, we're going to have to like call it quits. Josh, uh, Josh says, how many grams of protein do you intake on a first date? You know what, Josh? That's a little uh, TMI. That's a little after hours about that. Okay. I will tell you that at my gym this morning, you had to lift a very heavy weight. And my trainer literally said, hold it like a penis. This is a woman. I said, I don't know about you. I don't usually hold big 40 pound penises in front of me, but okay. Turn off the radio. If your kids are in the car, turn off the radio. Okay. Let's get into the show. Speaking of protein, Speaking of meals, this week's uh, episode of Daily Dose of Donna is sponsored by Factor Meals. As you guys know, eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian-approved, and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there are Protein Plus... Also, there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and get after your goals. Remember, there's two-minute meals, no prep, no mess. Well, that would be my question in the Love is Blind um, pod. I'd be like, which, which factor meal do you eat? I personally like the Caribbean spiced tofu. You? So just remember that you... If you sign up for Factor, it's less expensive than takeout. Every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Try your own Factor meals. Go to head, go to factormeals.com slash Donna50. That's D-A-N-A 50. And use code Donna50 to get 50% off. So code Donna50 at factormeals.com slash Donna50 to get 50% off. Thank you, Factor. We also have a question in the um, in the the feed saying, "What season is the best of Love Is Blind?" I've only seen current season. I would say the best season of Love Is Blind is a season that you're on, because the second the season is over, you'll never remember any of them again. But I would start with season one. I would do anything to have six seasons of Love Is Blind to binge right now, because that is the best bingeable show. You will get it done in one weekend. I find something happens with Love is Blind. You can get through five episodes of TV without even blinking your eyes. Like you don't even know what's going on. All of a sudden you're eight episodes in. They do something in the editing where they don't even like tell you when the episode ends and when the new one goes. And all of a sudden it's tomorrow. And you're like, oh shit, I forgot to pick my kids up from school. Gotta go do that. Gotta go do that. Um. Okay, so let's get into some more topics, some more Hot topics. Hot, hot, hot. Well, I wouldn't want to say that this is necessarily hot, like I am so turned on by this, but this is a conversation in the Bravo sphere. Alexis Bellino and John Bad News Jansen. John Jansen. You know my feelings on John Jansen. I think John Jansen was the reason Shannon went down in her life. And I guarantee you, I would be shocked if Alexis Bellino also didn't in some way find herself struggling at the end of this relationship because I just have a hard time believing in love when I see them. I don't know why. It doesn't feel like a genuine relationship. However, they were at the Direct TV event over the weekend for the Oscars and they were interviewed by Page Six. And in this interview, they talk about the fact that they are so in love. It's like they are planning on getting married. He has a he has given her a promise ring and she believes that, you know, this will lead to another wedding. And they're so happy. Guys, we're so happy. You know, those couples that are so happy are always the ones that are the most miserable. But I just think these two are so unwatchable. I kind of can't handle it. I really dislike him. I never liked her. And now to have to see them both on my screen is going to upset me. It's going to bother me. 
It's going to bother me, but we have to do what we have to do. We have to do the Lord's work, the hard work. Okay. No one's going to watch those shows on their own. We've got to do it. I have to get the news to you. What would life be if I wasn't watching this shit TV for you? Now, I hope the next season of OC is actually good, but Alexis will be a struggle for me. Meanwhile, I received a TikTok over the weekend. It's not a video. It's just a picture. You know how on TikTok you can just like post one picture or just like a slideshow? And it was someone taking a picture of Shannon Bedore on Sunday at R&D Kitchen, which is a restaurant, I believe, in Newport Beach area where Shannon lives. Okay? She's sitting at the bar. She's alone. I want to say it's like near the mall or in the mall. And she's having a cocktail. And apparently, according to this person who wrote the TikTok or who posted the TikTok, said that she, at that moment, found out that John Jansen was at a red carpet for the Oscars with Alexis. She got so upset, like screamed at someone or got angry some, somehow and got into an Uber and left and went home. The good news is she's Ubering. I don't think she has a choice. I don't believe you get your license back when you have a DUI, um, like that fast at least. I just feel like the whole vibe felt sad to me to know that she's sitting at a bar, restaurant, whatever, alone on a Sunday afternoon, which is fine. Like I have no issue with anyone hanging out alone. I think it's kind of nice. There's actually nothing better than going to the mall alone or like Target or Costco or any of those. Actually, like take me everywhere alone. But the whole experience about the fact that, you know, she apparently got the information that he was currently on that red carpet, because you know how everything kind of happened a little bit earlier. Um, the Oscars started so early. Anyway, ugh, not going to be good. And Tamara, Tamara just like is posting stuff of her and Alexis left and right. So she clearly is team Alexis. Who is Shannon teams with on this season? Like who is she going to hang out with? Doesn't it doesn't feel good. Something that I'm a little concerned. Now, um, John Jansen also said in this video, I couldn't imagine my life without her. Okay. We'll see about that. Um, let's move on to another story. The Vanderpump Rules trailer uh has mid-season trailer has been released. Number one, the, sh the fact that we are already seeing a mid-season trailer is highly concerning. How many episodes of this shit show have we actually seen on Vanderpump Rules this season? Like, I, I mean, how many episodes have we seen so far? Like, I want to say we've, I, I thought we were only, you know, three, four episodes in. If anyone wants to do the math, I, I really don't believe we're more than five episodes in. I just know that it's been five episodes of struggle if it's five episodes. Now, everyone feels differently. There's a lot of people out there who are finding this season incredibly interesting. They're really like leaning in and loving all the storylines and really learning everything. But I do not personally believe that this is a show that is keeping my attention. Although, again, I have to do it for you guys. So seriously, pay me more. Okay, YouTube, do you understand the work that I have to put in? If you guys don't get the sarcasm here, like we need to work on our sense of humors, okay? Because I, I know someone out there is going to write a comment and be like, I can't believe this, this B is commenting about having to work hard watching TV while I am out here, you know, killing myself, doing A, B, and C. Guys, I was joking. I was joking, okay? Just, just making sure we know that we have to be very clear so that I don't get canceled today for working hard watching TV. Okay. <laughs> Michelle says, we'll cover your visit to the mental health facility, Donna. I mean, I was there for research. Lots of people are at the mental health facility. Great interviews we can get out of them. Okay. So anyway, I, I, I don't understand how we're already mid-season of Vanderpump Rules, but this is my take on it. The trailer, and I can't show it to you guys because yesterday, you know what? Let's, Let's talk about Jax. I decided yesterday, I declared that I'm going to sue Jax um, and the Valley as an entire whole, not just the show, but the entire Valley I'm suing because I aired their trailer from an Instagram post on my YouTube show yesterday, as you guys saw, if you were here live. And 
YouTube put me in jail. They said, remove this video, copyright issues, NBC Universal is coming out after you. And I will tell you one thing and one thing only. As Michelle said in my comments yesterday on the Facebook page, they should be paying me to promote the valley. It's good promotion. We're talking about it. However, I will not be messing around with airing live trailers anymore. Scared of that. So we'll just talk about the fact that I believe whenever you put together a mid-season trailer like this, it usually is like a, a, you know, a come to Jesus moment. Like we need to figure this out, guys. The numbers are are fine, but they're going down every week. The rate, like the reviews are awful. We're seeing the TikToks. We're seeing the Instagrams. We're listening to the podcast. People are not into Vanderpump Rules right now. We need to up the drama. We need to find something. So then they go through all the footage, I think, and they try to kind of piece together some incredible um, preview. Nothing was so shocking or so different. It was still like the Tom, the one thing I thought was a little interesting was when um, Tom Schwartz goes to Katie Maloney and offers to have a one night stand. Interesting. Cannot even imagine them having sex when they were married. I don't think they did, but definitely cannot imagine it now. Um, we also see Tom making out with a couple of chicks. We see Katie making out with that girl. Uh, let's see what else we see. Oh, we have an interesting conversation between Sheena and Brock where she says, and this is when they, I think it's all editing, where she says, I don't think we're going to end up together forever. Um, you know what she probably said in that moment was like, if you don't, you know, support me in my PTSD or my post-traumatic stress, PT, yeah, post-traumatic, no, postpartum. If you don't support me with my postpartum anxiety and stress, I don't think we can end up together forever. She probably said something like that. But all we hear is her telling Brock, I don't think we're going to end up together. And then you see him wiping a tear. I'm trying to decide if I want to get into this conversation today or maybe I'll get into it somewhere else. But I had a whole dialogue with so many people on my Instagram the other day because I posted a reel that Brock posted of him and Sheena. I mean, of him and Summer Moon, she really does kind of look like Sheena, um, their daughter getting ready for a ballet class. And there was something about it that just really irked me. It was feeling very pageant kid, show up his mom and dad, dance moms, like tell the audience, thank you for watching. And Summer's just looking at a phone. Thank you for watching. I don't know. I'm, I, I, I can't certain things like that are just, it's one thing if you want to show your kids, like I'm not against that. I show my kids on my Instagram or whatever. It's another thing if you're using your kid for clout, for followers, for money, for, you know, there's no question that Sheena wants Summer Moon to be a star. I don't know if everyone feels that way. I don't know if Stassi is the same, Jackson, Brittany, um, Lala, I don't know, but I see it the most with Sheena. Like Sheena would turn her, you know, her anything that she has, like her car. She would, Sheena would like be the person that would try to get her car to be paid for certain things on film, right? It was a little weird. We can talk about that another time though. I don't want to get into that. Um, also, also another conversation about, um, there was a lot of, on that Vanderpump Rules trailer, there was a lot of Daniel. Danny, that's um, Ariana's boyfriend. He is heavily in that trailer. So we will see more of him. Um, we we know that Lala will open up about the fact that she wants to have more kids today. And of course, she's pregnant. We know that. So, all right, we're getting through it week by week. Um, okay, so uh, let's... Let's move on before I get into my next story, which is going to be all about, you know, the Kate Middleton fun. Um, we need to shout out another sponsor of this week's episode of the show, and that is Row Body. So Row provides access to the most popular weight loss shots on the market. As you guys know, I personally have not taken any weight loss shots, so I can't speak from experience, but so many of my friends, so many of my dosers, so many of my audience members have used weight loss shots. And they have significantly improved not only their weight, but their 
inner markers, like I said, cholesterol, blood pressure, um, blood sugar, diabetes markers, all of those things. So the row body program pairs a weekly shot with, with healthy lifestyle changes. So you can lose 15 to 20% of your weight in a year on average, and actually keep it off. Over 200,000 people have already chosen row to help them lose weight. Row bodies, row body program members have support throughout the process. And uh, if el eligible for medication, patients have access to their provider on demand for any questions. So you can sign up online from the comfort of your own home. No uh, doctor's offices, no waiting rooms. And if you sign up today, you'll pay just $99 for your first month and $145 a month after that. Medication costs are separate. That's ro.co, R-O dot C-O slash Donna, D-A-N-A. A quick little homework reminder, you guys. Um, tonight will be the Vanderpump Rules episode. I believe that airs at 8 p.m. Pacific time and Eastern time. But at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern time, we are doing a happy hour on Zoom for Patreon members. So if you're in the overdose category of Patreon, you can totally try it one month, see if you like it, get to know some of your fellow dosers, hang out with us. Let's talk all things Kate Middleton. Let's talk all things, you know, conspiracy theories. Let's talk about all the, you know, things that I'm scared to talk about on here. And even though I talk about most of the things, um, and Yes, we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. So make sure to join Patreon. The, the link is below and jump in. It's the overdose tier. You will get the link prior to the meeting at 6 p.m. Pacific time. I can't wait to see you. I do not record the Zooms. So that means it's real free to go. We just like go off, right? We have a lot of fun. See you there tonight. Okay, let's move on. Before I get into Kate Middleton, I just want to throw out one little piece of news that Real Housewives of Beverly Hills is back. Apparently, production is starting in April. Now, the cast is mum about what they can and can't say. So I thought we would play a little game and decide who we believe we want on the next season of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Who do we think is staying? Who do we think is downgrading to a friend of? Who would be the ideal cast, et cetera? So I'm going to just throw out some um, thoughts of my own, and I would love to see your own in your um, comments, okay? So number one is I think the definite 100% no question shoe-ins will be on the next season. Erica Jane, way, like there's not even a question. Um, Sutton, Garcelle, and Kyle. I know that a lot of people are on the fence. Will Kyle continue to do the show? I don't think Kyle is saying no to anything. Anything. Okay? So Kyle's back on the show. In my opinion. I can't imagine. I think they're going to they're going to give her so much money to make sure that they she stays on the show. I think Crystal will stay. I know that this is unpopular with a lot of people. Um I just don't see them getting rid of her. However, she needs to come up with a better storyline. We need to figure something out to make it more interesting. Like I would be down for a Crystal storyline where Kyle goes after Crystal's husband, Rob, for saying that Morgan has leaked the stories. Like let's break this fourth wall already. I want Kyle to like be mad at everyone that's thrown out stuff about Morgan. I want to hear Morgan's name in every episode next season. That's what I think. I believe that Anna Marie is... Audi 5000. I think she knew she was out when she saw her first episode. Um, and I think, I think Dorit will get downgraded. I don't know why. I have a strong feeling that Dorit may just be a friend. Um, a lot of people are saying, let's get Kim back. Let's get Kathy on. I don't think Kim and Kathy are going to be down to do series regulars on Beverly Hills. I think if anything, there should be a Kyle, Kim, and Kathy show, a separate show. But if that was the case, Kyle would be an executive producer because there's no way she's signing up unless all three of them get executive producer credit and money. And then that means we're just watching the Kardashians. Like we're just watching a produced, a self-produced show. Um, I would love for Lisa Vanderpump to come back. Ain't going to happen, but I would do anything for that. And then Ryan Bailey and I on Ryan Bailey's show last week had a conversation about Teddy Mellencamp. I didn't bring it up, but Ryan did. Ryan said, 
I have a feeling that we are angling towards a Teddy Mellencamp return. I think he's not that far from the truth. I have not heard a word. I've asked all my friends who are really close with her. No one is giving me any information, meaning they don't know. They, they're saying they have no idea. I truly believe nothing has been done yet, for sure, for sure. But I would be shocked if they don't at least try to get Teddy back. And here's why. And I told Ryan this last week. I know that you guys aren't going to jump on that idea. And I also have admitted this many times on the show that I think Teddy is a better podcaster than she is a housewife. I don't. I didn't think she was good on the housewives. I didn't like her on the housewives. Um, I think Kyle needs a plus one, and she doesn't have one. That's number one. I don't think Kyle comes back to the show without someone in her corner. So whether it's Teddy, where it, maybe it's Faye. I don't know. She needs someone back on her. And number two, Teddy, just like Tamara got pulled back, Teddy is a very, very popular in the podcast circuit. She's a very popular housewife. I know that a lot of you guys may, you know, disagree, but her numbers are huge on that podcast. Their numbers are huge. They are always in the top 10 of TV and film. Do you know what kind of numbers those take? So she has an audience. I'm just saying. And they showed a couple different clips of her this season. We've seen Teddy now a few times, including in the reunion. Just saying. If Kyle needs a plus one against Sutton, I would be interested to watch a season with Teddy now when she feels more confident in her skin and more comfortable being like a public figure. I would be interested. I'm just going to say, okay, I know that you guys are not liking that. Wow. You guys really don't like it. <laughs> Sorry. I don't think that I have any like knowledge or facts. I'm just saying what I've, what I thought it would be an interesting show. Okay. Let's move on. Kate freaking Middleton. Obviously, unless you're living under a rock, you have been listening and hearing everyone and their mother talk about Kate Middleton. Now, I'm going to say something really fast for all of you guys. And by all of you, I mean like the two people that left me a comment on YouTube saying, how dare you? How dare you call her Kate Middleton? She is Princess Catherine of Wales. Guys, she's Kate Middleton in the press. Okay. Everyone's calling Kate Middleton, Kate Middleton. So please stop coming after me for every little thing you want. <laughs> I am I am literally just calling her what like Daily Mail is calling her, TMZ, page six, everyone. Okay. So for those of you that are confused and have no idea what this whole thing is about, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a conversation around it, but I really want you to understand I don't have every single piece of knowledge from the timelines and the everything. All I have is what I've kind of put together in terms of timeline, and I don't believe that I know everything, okay? However, here is a summary of why this is a big deal. Because as I said on my Instagram stories this morning, I said to Lance, Lance, I... um. Hold on really fast. Mom Unscripted says she's literally not a Middleton at all anymore. I understand. I just want to be clear. It doesn't, sometimes people are just known for something. So I'm just going to call her Kate. Princess Kate. Princess Catherine. Princess Catherine of Wales Middleton. Pippa's sister. So I said to Lance yesterday, I said, I or this morning, I said, I can't get over all this royal family stuff. Like, I'm so into it. I'm so deep diving this. Like, I can't get enough. And Lance is like, I don't get it. Why? Because she took a picture and then Photoshopped it. Oh, oh, Lan uh, Lance, uh, you think she was behind that Photoshop? You think she sat there and like smiled for a perfectly posed picture with a very, very expensive camera? We, uh, we've gotten the metadata. And um, and Prince William was behind the camera because he's such a photographer. And now, um, you know, not only was the photo perfectly framed, but now we're finding all these inconsistencies because she's just messing around on Photoshop. And then she, you know, posted the picture 
because that's what you do as the princess. You're like behind your social media accounts. You're posting your own pictures. And then she woke up the next day and was like, whoops, <laughs> mistake. Absolutely. 100%. No, no, no. As Eliza Rose and my friend and I were talking last night, there is no way that Kate Middleton has been out of the public eye for months and months and months and then finally communicates with her constituents. Okay. Remember, taxpayers pay for the royal family. Like they, they are public servants. They are, it, it's like, you know, a president or whatever. You, you, she does owe her people truth and explanations. So you're going to tell me that she has not communicated with them whatsoever about anything. And then she first time comes back and instead of says, thank you so much for your concern. I understand there's a lot of communication around where I've been. I'm fine. I'm resting. I am in, you know, better health. I need to take a little bit more time and I will be fine. I love you and I care for you. Meanwhile, so sorry about that picture. I was just having fun with. Huh? I don't believe it. I don't believe it for a second. I think no one really cared that much until this picture. This picture being released and then immediately getting that kill notice from AP News, which has, it, it never happens. Like that does not happen. But that means it was such a bad quality image in terms of something that people, like no one could stand by it in the Associated Press. This is crazy, guys. This is crazy. So just so you guys know kind of why it, this is a big deal. She was, she was in hospital, in the hospital for surgery in early July. This is the, like, this is the PR attempt. Okay. Remember, she talked about that she was going to go to um, surgery in January, I want to believe, but she hasn't been seen since before Christmas. She hasn't made any public appearances or released any photos since then. The royal family released a photo of her and her kids for British Mother's Day, meaning the royal family PR, this, this PR failure, has released that photo. So it wasn't Kate Middleton just like effing around with the photo and posting it. The royal family decided to post that picture. And the AP issued a retraction of the photo and a do not print notice due to several obvious signs of editing. And so then the TikTok journalists, who I think are geniuses, come in and they have dug into the photo and they are re realizing that there's a lot of similarities and of a lot of things. For example, the clothes that the kids are wearing, the missing tooth. One of the kids, I can't remember which one of them, the younger one, I think that has a missing tooth in the picture, had the same missing tooth in November. Um, then... Then the picture of Kate Middleton's face, people have done a little bit of deep diving and realize her actual smile, face, expression, features, everything is mirrored perfectly from a picture she took in 2016 on the cover of Vogue. 2016 to 2024 is eight years. The eight years of kids, of motherhood, and of um, the stress of being a, a princess in the royal family. And you have the exact same face, not one little alteration or change. Same exact pose, same face, same everything. Then, then her going and tweeting that, which she like doesn't do that, also felt so outrageous and so strange. And they have not released the original unedited photo. Why? I would like to say that one of the conspiracies that I truthfully, uh, I think I agree with, is Kate never sat for that photo. That photo is not a real photo. The photo of Kate with her three kids around her is not a real photo. It is a photo doctored together and put together by Photoshop and by all these different things. That's my guess. I also do not believe Kate Middleton tweeted or Instagrammed her apology. Do I believe something is wrong with Kate? I don't know. We don't know. She could be recovering from surgery. A lot of people are thinking, just leave her alone, let her recover. I don't believe three months after a surgery or even two months after a surgery, you're not good enough to at least provide some sort of footage or even a picture a proof of life, everything's fine, a communication with the audience and the public saying everything is okay, 
I'm healthy, I'm recovering. Or the least that we expect is that Prince William comes out since he's been all over the place and he's been on air and TV and film and pictures or whatever. Have he come out and say, or have him come out and say like, thank you so much for your support. We appreciate it so much. My, my lovely wife is at home and she's resting and she's tired. And, you know, we've gone through a lot of struggle in this home because of my father being also diagnosed with cancer. Remember, none of us know anything about Prince uh, King Charles's cancer. We don't know what stage it is. We don't know what kind of cancer it is. It's all so wild and so mysterious. And remember, a lot of people are like, let them be, let them be. But would you guys say the same thing if it was our president and our vice president going through this? Like, think about it in America. Can you imagine that? I'm just putting it out there that Kamala had surgery and wasn't seen for three, four months. And her job is public appearance. And then she releases a photo with her and her family and you see all these problems with it. I think people would question it. And I think you're allowed to question it. I, I, I don't know. I mean, this is interesting. It's wild. And the PR team of the of the you know royal family is is failing in every left turn that they make because either A, Queen Elizabeth is no longer with us and she was on top of everyone or really, really strongly. And she was, you know, very, very clear about it. And secondly, um, Michelle, I'm going to answer that in just a second. And secondly, uh, I believe that, you know, it's a very antiquated PR firm or team, and they're used to being around in the old days where you could just release one picture and goodbye. But this is 2024 when people are really, really, they dig into everything. Yes, I do agree. Some people take the conspiracy theories too far, okay? But I also think it's interesting. And I love a conspiracy theory when it comes to this kind of stuff. I don't love it when it comes to like, you know, the safety of our world. But like when it comes to this kind of stuff, it's interesting to me. I find it really highly interesting. Now, Michelle says he has cancer. It's a private issue. We should let them, you know, let him be. I disagree when you're the king of, uh, you know, when you're the king, <laughs> you don't need, I don't need to know like your blood count levels. But if our, pre if our president, if the president of the United States was diagnosed with cancer, but we had no idea how far into the cancer it was, what the diagnosis is, what the details were, what the treatment was. I truthfully don't believe anyone in America would be cool with that. Like, let him be. Just let him have cancer. Oh, okay. Michelle says, I met Kate having cancer possibly. I mean, I have never said that I think Kate has cancer. I really, I, I, I personally hope she is healthy and okay, but I do believe something is amiss. And I do believe something is amiss. And I do believe that she is intentionally shielding herself from public from the public or sharing her, you know, journey or her status with the public for a reason. And it's not just a recovering from surgery because you could shut this up in two seconds, right? If you are just recovering from surgery, you could just quickly release some sort of video or your husband could. But there's no communication and that's what's confusing. Everything's fine. Now this picture yesterday and oh lordy, you guys, we can really get, um, you know, in trouble for, for these kinds of uh, conspiracies, but I can't get enough of it. So I'm going to pull up Face Reality 16 on my stories as well, because she is, you know, she's been on my show before, Face Reality 16. Her name is Eliza. She is the queen of deep dives. She understands exactly how to really go deep into these. And she has started to question the validity of the picture that was taken yesterday. Remember, there was a picture right after this Photoshop fail. There was a picture of her in the car with Prince William leaving. She was going to a private appointment and he was going to some public Commonwealth um, event. And all you see of her is like the back side of her face. Okay. Let's, uh, oh my God. Bye. Let's, um, let's talk about that really fast. Okay. So in 
this photo. And remember, everything I'm saying right now is just for fun because we love talking this stuff. Like we are right now acting like the we're acting like Heather Gay. Okay, this is what we're doing. Receipts, proof, timeline, screenshots. We're acting like Heather Gay on a mission to figure out what who is really behind reality Von Teese. Okay? This is fun. This is light. Please do not take this so seriously. Please know that all I care about is the health and happiness of these people. I do not want anything bad to be happening, but I find it fascinating, the PR blundering around it. I find it really, really fascinating. So let's get into this really fast. (laughs) Okay. So on Face Reality 16, in her stories, we talk about, let me go back because I've watched a lot of them. Okay. Hold, please. So if you're watching, if you're watching, here we are. Okay. We're going to start here. The first thought of this is that, and I hope you guys, I'm trying to make it as big as you can see it on a story. But as you can see, there's something going on here. In this photo of Prince William driving away, in the photo, you see bricks behind Kate in that window that looked perfectly straight and normal. Above, and of course, it's kind of hard to see because, you know, the picture is not so large. But above, you see another color of bricks, and they're going a different way, okay? We really should be putting our tinfoil hats on right now. Like, right now. We all need this. So why is the brick, a different color going downwards up here. And then here it's going flat. Now, upon further notice, totally dark, going at an angle. Here's a a closer. Going at an angle. There's a corner right here. And then here they're going straight. Now over here, you can see it easier. There's a corner up here. Do you see how there's a corner? There's a wall that goes in and then to the right. And down here, it's a complete different brick. You guys, this is not a real picture. You have to admit that. No brick wall has two completely different textures at one level and then a completely different above, right above the car. I can't see how this makes sense. Okay. If you, and this is a brightening of the photo. This is not the actual photo that was released. This is when you brighten the photo, you immediately see a difference of the bricks. Got it? Okay. Now we're going to go on. This is where it gets a little even weirder. If you brighten up the photo and zoom in, this is what it looks like of Kate. She's looking aside. But look at this, you guys. This creator, Ashley the Texan on Twitter went down the fashion rabbit hole. This is very similar to Kate's 2016 Somme hairstyle and hat. Play with the coloring and you can clearly see what looks like a bow outline right here. Looks like they blurred out her big round earrings as well. You guys, this may be hard for you to see and I'm just curious if you feel this, but this looks like the exact same photo. Okay. All right. I love a conspiracy, so I'm having fun with this. The outfit was from this event and look at the brick wall in this picture. Interesting, right? It matches the brick you can see through the car, but not the brick above the car. Face Reality 16 says, did they think changing the brick would convince us or are they in full on trolling mode? Here's another one, you guys. (laughs) I'm having so much fun talking about this. This is her picture in the photo that she took with her kids. This one. This is Kate Middleton's hand. Her pointer finger is much shorter than her middle finger in the doctored photo. In her original photo, her pointer finger and her middle finger are pretty much the same size. If you go like this, and then you wrap around your photo, I mean, try to like look at your own hand. I guess there's a world where she can like pull one finger back 
this is just interesting, right? Okay. Is there anything else? Is it perhaps, oh, face reality 16 has gone to town. She says, is it perhaps their nanny, Maria Teresa Turian Barallo? In this picture, their nanny, look at the nanny's fingers. Here, this is the nanny's fingers, and this is the doctored image. Guys. <laughs> You guys have to think this is weird, right? This is weird. Is there any more? Lift this image to see if they match up and co compare it to Kate's hand. It's a much closer match. This is Kate's hand. This is the photo. And this is the nanny. Jesus. Again, I mean... Literally, Eliza deserves a Pulitzer Prize for this stuff. The right hand comparison is a blurrier hand, but still matches up with the nanny more than Kate. Where in the world is Kate Middleton? Oh my gosh, you guys. This to me is so interesting. Do I think that she is severely ill or struggling, I really, really don't think so. I don't. I don't know why. I don't. I think if she really was, if there was actually a surgery issue, like I believe there would be communication. I believe that there would be honest communication saying Kate is struggling. She's having a hard time. She can't, you know, she's really, she had complications from the surgery. I think there would be open communication. I think it's the fact that she is completely being quiet other than this like weird fake communication and the Photoshop fails is giving a hot mess in everyone and everyone is tripping out over it. You guys, it was the cover of NBC. It was the beginning of the NBC nightly news tonight, last night. Like this is for real, a real deal, you know, concern with people and I can't get enough. So I will be talking about this as more developments keep coming on. Of course, there is definitely um, lots of conspiracies around Prince William and the fact that he has an, a woman that he's been having an affair with for a long time. And, um, and she has now all of a sudden had this amazing press about her. It's been popping up. And so a lot of people are saying, oh my gosh, is this like a Princess Diana thing where they're slowly trying to kind of remove her from the public eye and then, you know, start to puff up this other woman. Now, all of a sudden, you know, I don't believe, I don't know. I don't know any of this. I just think something is happening where now all of a sudden all this energy is being focused on Kate. And are we taking off the energy from from Prince William, or maybe possibly that weird death, uh, you know, self-inflicted death of Pippa's, this is Kate Middleton's sister's ex, Thomas. There is a lot of weird stuff happening in the royal family right now, and everyone is interested. And yes, like someone said, royals don't really have a choice to be private. They collect public money, and they have their their inherited job means that private family stuff has always been public. And that's really the truth. So when you're a royal, you owe it to the to the world and to your, you know, your public that you have to share this stuff with them. I find it so interesting. Okay. I am going to um wrap up the show. And we'll talk tomorrow uh, with more stuff. I hope to see you guys tonight at the happy hour. We're going to have so much fun. We're going to talk all of these things. And I'm sure more developments will come out a little bit later. Um, I hope the best for Kate, Princess Catherine of Wales, um, and her adorable family and children. That's all that matters. Um, but I am so interested. And now I can't get enough of it. And as Mark said, he believes that it's alleged, but Catherine, Princess of Wales, Kate Middleton is joining the Suits reboot next season. So we'll find out more about that later if you didn't get the joke. I don't know what to tell you. Have an amazing, amazing Tuesday, as Mauricio would say, and I will see you guys mañana. Bye.